thank you so much for doing this interview with me right off the top. How does it feel having one of the most anticipated uh, short films in the Toronto International Film Festival? Uh, critics and people I've talked to before I even saw it, they were the ones that were talking about saying, if you need to see a certain film, this was the one to see. How does it feel having that kind of accolade around this? Well, that's good to hear. I didn't know that was um, floating around. So that makes me really excited um, because it's a short film, you know, and shorts sometimes get buried and that's fine. Um, but I'm very excited and very proud about this film. You know, this is my third time at TIFF um, in the past 10 years. And this is, um, you know, a, a very close story to my heart. It's a story about my parents. Um, it's a story about Iranians. And I think that I want a lot of people to see it. So I'm excited. Let's get right into this. What is the name of the film and what is it about, please? So the name of the film is Motherland, and it's about um, Babak, who's an Iranian immigrant who's come from Iran, and he's in Iowa during the height of the Iran hostage crisis in 1979. And the film looks at a day in which he goes to meet his American fiance's parents for the first time during this really um, volatile time in American and Iranian history. How were you able to compact so much intensity and feelings in a short film? I've never seen that before. And this one is probably one of the biggest reasons why it stood out so much for myself and so many other people. You know, it's tough. It all starts in the writing process. And I think that, um, you know, I've, I've become more seasoned as a filmmaker since I started making shorts. So I think I have that experience but it's also just like being really diligent about writing and really using every moment because it's a short using every single moment and every single line to count for something and never wasting a breath and never wasting a frame so I think that that helps and then also just the subject matter lends itself to tension so um that really helps that it expands also when you talk about yes we're talking about a certain story but we're also talking about family we're talking about patronism we're talking about racism we're talking about so many different subjects and again you pack this all in this this one short film mm -hmm. yeah it's a lot you know you want to be careful that I, as a filmmaker that you're not um you know putting too much on the audience with a short but i think that there's many layers to this you know there's yeah. this is like obviously a political time that people i think have since forgotten about um and, you know, we, the films that exist about this film, this time in history are kind of made by Americans like Argo and um, often don't represent Iranians in the best light. I think it's a really nuanced issue. But for me, you know, it's also just a story about this man who feels uprooted. Um, this was my father and, you know, based on him. And um, it's, it's about this, you know, I want to look at Iranians and look at the story of their journey in America that I don't think has really been shown before. So, um yeah, it's it's there's many layers to it. And I think that, you know, um, a lot of people will get different things out of it. How did your father feel about this when he saw it? Well, my father passed away 10 years ago, oh, so he didn't. Uh, no, it's OK. He he um he never will get to see this, obviously. But I have a very supportive um, family on on his side, my Iranian side of my family. So I talked to, you know, my grandmother, my his brothers, my cousins. And many other Iranian people, just to get a perspective of what it was actually like in 1979 when this was happening. And then, of course, I have my mom who was there, was, you know, engaged to him, what ended up marrying him. And so she knows sort of, you know, her 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 dad, my grandfather, didn't speak to her for two years when she married an Iranian. He thought that wasn't right. So, um, you know, this is like it was I had a lot of resources. You know, I didn't have to, like, look that far for inspiration. Let's talk about the actors, the one who portrayed, I guess, the image for your dad, your mom, and your grandfather, because three amazing performances, especially who I actually really enjoyed, was the one who played your grandfather, because I've seen him before in yes. other, uh, in other uh, shows. Yes, that's so. Um, John Ralston is like a Canadian legend. He's been in so many different films from Stockholm to Mary Goes Round. He's been on a lot of Canadian TV. And, you know, I, I saw him in a film called Mary Goes Round, Molly McGlynn, um, and I loved his performance in that film. And I, for some reason, thought that, like, you know, there's a, I can see a connection between, I feel like he can really nail this role, which he did. 
And um, so I had, you know, a privilege to work with somebody so seasoned, you know, somebody who started in theater. Um, and it was amazing to collaborate with him. And then Oriana, who plays Katie, based on my mom, I found her through casting agent. That was just a great find. I think she brings a lot of, you know, she has that very 70s aura about her, which I think that she reminds me of actresses from that time. And it was really important for me to like really evoke that time period. And I think she just brings like a nuance to that character is kind of hard to play as well. But then of course we have Betosh Fazlali who plays Bobak and he's just a standout, like amazing actor. He's an Iranian refugee. His journey is not so different than my father's was. We connected in Vancouver when I was shooting TV out there. And he's just, you know, he become a friend. And I think he really connected to this on a personal level. So, you know, that was just amazing to watch. From beginning to end, you make this look very gritty. There's even, let me even put aside the actors and actresses in this film. Just the background, just the, the texture of the film. Very gritty. Why did you choose that? Because no matter what, you see, you feel what you see. Mm -hmm. I think atmosphere and setting is so important. It's what, you know, audiences may not really register right away, but it's affecting them when they watch it on an emotional mm -hmm. level. And even, you know, whether it's been my shorts or my future firecrackers or this, like setting is so important. And I will drive around with my producers for days and days and days to find the right locations because this was shot all on location and um also you know it was a little difficult because we're doing a period piece so we had to really find spaces that felt still dated and we managed to you know shoot around Hamilton shoot around Pickering in some motels and 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 we just really really made sure the setting was right but then also shooting on 16 millimeter film helps with that grittiness helps with that 79 feeling so I think that all comes into play why did you decide a short? You could have easily made this into a feature film. Heck, you could have even made this into a miniseries if you wanted to. Yeah. Why was the short the the right way to go? I think that's a good question because, you know, really at, at this point in time, I, I feel like features make more sense for me. But I was in the middle of directing a lot of television after my feature came out. And television is interrupts a lot of the writing process for features it takes up a lot of your life so the short was more possible in the time frame I wanted I was itching to make something soon and making a short just felt like more viable and more reachable for me however I have been writing a, a companion piece feature to the short for the past wow. you know four years so it's in the works okay so the story continues what do you hope viewers will get from this incredible film I hope that they really recognize um, the way West Asian people and Iranian people have been portrayed in, in the media over the past like 44 years since this happened. And I would love to, for them to reflect on that. And also just to, you know, think about this time in history and also maybe pay attention to what's happening in Iran today, which is another revolution with women, life, freedom, which we're coming up on a year anniversary of. So um, yeah, I hope that people take away all of that. And I honestly just with every movie I make, I just want I hope that they're impacted emotionally. Um, and that's most important to me. And one quick question. Any chance you'll be taking on that as a film, too, on what's going on today in Iran? It's it's hard to say. I think for me, I, I step back and I let the women and people of Iran be the voice for that over me um, because I'm I grew up here and everything. So if I can support in any way a filmmaker to help tell that story, I will. But I don't think that's a story for me to tell. I'll tell the well, diaspora stories instead. Well, the story that you've told us is incredible. And I got to say, uh, I'm so glad I got a chance to see it. And um, it's something that sticks with me. Thank you so much for this interview. Thank you so much for such an incredible film. And congratulations on having this film part of the Toronto International Shortcuts. Thanks so much, Rudy.